this one is manufactured drama, to be fair. No, Pedro. I will <laughs> take a look at this. Oh, he deleted it. <laughs> uh, no, you did. And welcome back to Linux Gamecast Weekly, the show that covers the latest Linux gaming news, reviews, how tos, and most importantly, whatever the hell else we come up with. I'm Ben Stone. That's Jordan Swang. That's Pedro Mateus. And with you, Shot Realm Dynamic, joining us live on Twitch, helping us form the slightly improved da, 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 cocaine Voltron. That's right, YouTube. Deal with it. It's not cocaine. It's cocaine. <laughs> and I will fight should, you should on it. Cocaine be hyphenated. I didn't have a hyphen in that font. It really pissed me off. I'm too lazy ah, to make one. Yeah. Oh, damn it. We will get around damn to it. it. Tune in next week for a slightly improved version of that. It'll get better each and every week until it's like some straight art, straight up Pixar. <laughs> at at least it'll become more grammatically correct. No. 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 We, we got to fight. You just start throwing random commas in there. <laughs> we just spell it with lead shit, man. That's what I'm going to do. C13. All right. Hey. No, uh, it's, it's just all Zago text. Yeah. Uh, if you're watching live, we are kind of running in a little bit of a limp mode because Jitsi was like, hey, you doing a show tonight? I'm like, yeah. It's like, get wrecked. So, uh, Discord. We're using Discord for video and it's smooth 15 <laughs> to 24, whatever bullshit uh, frame. By the way, we're a little cussy during the show. So if you're scared of adults, hide the language. Um, yeah. I, I like to throw that out there. If you're it's, new, it's, it's, it's I know cinematic. we got new people watching, man. So I always like to throw it out there. I'm like, oh, we might be a bit cussy. Also, it's a comedy show that uh, we talk about Linux games occasionally. Keep that in mind. But we do like to see what's going on in each other's lives. Do you got anything new, Jordan? Uh, as, as of five minutes ago, I was trying to set up a Jitsi server. So uh, I got, I got like, oh, Jordan boy. does shit like that. We like, okay, we, we have a limp <laughs> mode thing and Jordan's like, you know what? I bet I can spill up a Jitsi server in my UK box. I, I mean, if I, Hey, if it worked by the time we went live, <laughs> yeah, you could talk some you'd shit. Be singing my yeah. gra- you'd be singing, you'd be singing my praises right now. So mm, no, I said, sometimes you gamble, sometimes I you lose. I wasn't saying it was a bad thing. How about you, Pedro? Do you have any new spatulas? <laughs> Uh, no, 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 no new spatulas. Uh, I did try the uh, that uh, boxy uh, snack thingy that all the YouTubers are talking about now. They're they're not terrible. There was uh, out of all of them, there was one that I didn't like because it tasted so fishy, and I do mean literally fishy. Oh, wait a minute, <laughs> was it perchance? I don't know the fish one. Uh, it, it wasn't fish. It was just like breaded stuff. It had uh, nori. Breaded fish, um, yeah. Had fish all over the packaging. Um, <laughs> sea kelp on one side and uh, fishy like flavoring to so it. This, this, but this, this was a fish dish, is what you're saying. Like it's mm. a fish snack. It, it, kinda, yeah. Except it had no actual fish, just fish flavor. <laughs> I, I mean, like anything chicken flavored has actual chicken in it, Pedro. I, I just want to know more about this fish drama. <laughs> I don't like what, fish. What, what? <laughs> that, I'm a terrible Portuguese person, okay? I hate football. Why, why do you hate, hate fish? Hippie bands? I hate mm-hmm. the beach. I hate the heat. It's, yeah, no, I, no. I could say something, <laughs> but I'd get in trouble, so I'm not. <laughs> listen, listen if, you, if you are Aquaman and you have a problem with Pedro Mateus, send us some hate mail. Drown his ass. Um, yeah. What am I up to? Oh, big shout out to uh, Mike and Aldius, because both of those, over the years, at uh, different times, have picked up UPSs. No, 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 not the package. I don't have spare UPSs. Trucks out in the backyard, <laughs> allegedly. What can Brown do for you? Uh, <laughs> they can't escape. Mm. Um. No, battery backups that I have here in the studio. I have uh, like four or five of them now. But Wednesday's show, I was in the middle of a thunderstorm, like a bad one. And the power blinked right before we went live in the pre-show. We were live. We never went down. So those things kicked in. And I know those are like silly things to have and they're expensive. And you think about them, they're always sucking power. It's been a couple of years, but yeah, they saved everything. Everything in the rack stayed up. All the PCs stayed up. Connections. It was great. So... There's your belated shout out, extra shout out for getting that off of our wish list. But I also want to bring this up. You might have noticed if you went to play Back for Blood this morning, uh, what's the word I can use? That shit didn't work. We're just going to put it like that. And it's like, hmm, well, maybe they tapped the EAC button, which probably they did, to which I'm just wondering, um, that basically gives Valve three months to fix that 
for the uh, Game Gear when that comes out. If they're going to mm-hmm. be like, hey, everything's going to work and EAC is going to work. So I'm looking forward to that because now I have a clock to keep track of things. And um, I was talking to Jordan about this when we were being black back for blood uh, Thursday. Yeah. Black for bud. Black for bud. <laughs> and uh, this is better than calling it left for dead. Because, yeah. yeah. Um, we're playing around with it. I'm trying to do a review for the Black Magic HDMI quad that I got a year ago that took 308 days to get a response from tech support. And I'm trying to work that into the review so it's a legitimate review. Also, with me losing my shit on Black Magic. So it, it, it's challenging, lads. It is. Because. <laughs> <laughs> I want to make it informative. Also, I want to break my foot off in their ass. Well, like, we were talking about it. Like, if you're if you're going to be paying three hundred dollars for a piece of recording, three hundred, you want some guarantee or five hundred dollars, whatever it was. Like, well, after tax, yeah, six hundred. I yeah, six six. But regardless, you you are paying more than a reasonable amount of money for a piece of recording equipment. You want some guarantee that it's going to you know work. It does work. Right? We're like, using it right now. This is this is also the other thing. Like, by the way, that, now it works. Yeah. Because I had to give it a month <laughs> after I finally got the fix from them. Like, okay, now I got to test it. Instead of saying, hey, I plugged it in. It worked. Here, everyone go buy it. I don't do shit like that. All right. There we go. That's all I got. Uh, does the horse have anything for us this week? Uh, no, the, the, hor- the horse is kind of empty. It's dead inside. It needs to be filled with many, many more multiplayer games that have easy anti-cheat. It's the Steam <laughs> Linux. So why? And yeah, (laughs) the uh, mainstream media finally caught wind of what the hell a Linux is. Oh, it's adorable, isn't it? Yeah, and uh, now we get articles from PC Gamer uh, titled, This is why Valve is uh, switching from Debian to Arch for the Steam Deck's uh, Linux OS. It's like, yeah, everyone knows exactly why that is. It's just that you only just learned about that. But yeah, basically they went to talk to uh, one of the Valve engineers, uh, Lawrence Yang. And yeah, uh, Arch is a rolling release and we can, not only do we get uh, more up-to-date packages out of the box, we can roll out those updates without having to worry about major version updates. Yay, we're passing the obvious now as news. Hey, Good job, as, as long gamer. as they're not this is this is PC gamer. As long as they're not actively pushing misinformation, I'm going to call that a win. Yeah, I yeah, I sit back okay. and I watched um, <laughs> tested. I'm seven just tested. They do a show. Um, I think on Thursdays, and the most recent one, they spent the first half of the show doing their best to explain what a proton was, and they got most of it right. So it is. They keep calling it emulator. Yeah. <laughs> it's an emulator. It's like. <laughs> You know, okay, okay. (laughs) Now, Pedro, you bring that up. You bring that up, son. But the wine project has even dropped that recursiveness. The the, 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 the whole wine is not (laughs) emulator. Wine no longer stands for wine is not an emulator. At 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 a certain point, like it it becomes a bit of a just like a semantic issue, right? Like, yes, it's not accurately describing what it is, but it's close enough for a layperson. Oh yeah, it it, it gets the point across. It gets the point across, and that's the important thing. Just kind of throw it out there for him. Yeah. But, you know, switching from Debian to Arch makes sense. However, I found like older versions of SteamOS that were Debian based, you know, had a better overall tone for the audio quality. Hipster. Oh, what are you talking about? Hipster. Uh, audio doesn't work on Linux. No, man. The, the, the film grain effects, what? film grain effects in the for Dead <laughs> were a lot smoother on Debian based. Uh, <laughs> uh, there, I, there's I thought, that, I thought, uh, De- thought Xpressions and Debian. Yeah, the valves worked. Uh, yeah. <laughs> I, I, I thought X sessions in Debian all had like the old timey, like black and white. Like every time you get a Zenity window, it's like, do, 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 do. And then, oh no, an error occurred. X eyes pops up. You're like, holy hell. <laughs> all right, fine. Um, yeah, that was the thing. That Steamboat Willie, something. We get, it, we get a little bit more yeah. um, Gabe Gear news for you, though. We do. And, uh, well, uh, the other people at Valve, I'm guessing the ones that are in charge of counting the amounts, the stupid amounts of money that they make, uh, are fairly confident that the Steam Deck will be your next PC upgrade. Ha. Now, they, they do say it's okay. We're not really you know, expecting uh, that people will grab this as, like, their one PC or... In- entirely replace their current gaming uh, box for this, but as a 
additional uh, way of playing your games and already having access to your entire Steam library, very much a big thing. And uh, it is... I put down the uh, the four pounds for the uh, reservation, and when I get the email to say that, oh, yeah, your numbers come up, pay us money, and we'll send you your thing. I'm going to give him the money because... If it weren't for the shortage, I'd probably have a new GPU right now. But no, it's, uh, I, I have some money to spend on a uh, Gabe gear. Well, one of the things I want to say is, you know, listen, <laughs> in December when these come out, um, the shortage, the shortages aren't that bad yet. But to quote Yang, Yang says, yes, I, I definitely think it's a viable choice. You can do everything you do on a PC with it. It's just a little PC that you can plug stuff into. But. It also says they don't have a strong prediction that a bunch of people are going to choose it as their first PC, but a lot of people choose to upgrade their existing PCs. We feel fairly confident that a Steam Deck will be a choice that they make. Bullshit. Um, yeah. It's a handheld portable. I, <laughs> I don't care uh, how you want to phrase it. I, I mean, if 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 right now you're rocking like an old Core 2 Duo and a 8800 GT, yeah, or maybe a maybe a Steam Deck laptop. is good. Yeah, maybe a Steam Deck is going to be for you. Like the the, head, the headline here is bad. I don't think it will be your next PC upgrade. I definitely think it might be your next PC purchase. Because you know, lots mm-hmm. of people have, like Pedro was saying, uh, a laptop or six. Mm-hmm. Um, and th- this this can definitely be uh, your secondary device. And I I'm definitely looking at buying one for uh, for that purpose, Eight. right? Like secondary. <laughs> Uh, 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 I'm, I'm sorry, Pedro, for underselling the magnitude <laughs> oh, of your laptop collection. Fuck right off, Jordan. We both know we can't count that high. <laughs> he doesn't, yeah, hey, he doesn't come even, on. I can count nope. a purple. He, he's like a King Shark reading. Yeah. <laughs> Book. Yeah. Oh, Read so, smart. I'm so smart. Yes. <laughs> I, no, no way enjoy Book. Yeah. And okay, uh, <laughs> Phil Spencer. Why the fuck are we about to talk about uh, the Phil Spencer? Who's Phil Xbox Spencer? Xbox Boss Man. <laughs> not, not, not Phil Spector, who I always get confused. Uh, They're two different people. Easy thing. He put out a little tweet. He's like, was Valve Software? Was at Phil. Come on, Phil. Grab her. Uh, was at, I guess that works. Uh, late speak. This week, talking with Scott Eric Gabe about the Steam Deck. I guess St- uh, Gabe's back from uh, New Zealand then. Uh, after having my yeah. Most of the week, I can see it's a really nice device. Games with, yeah, games with me on the go, screen size, control, all great. Playing Halo and Age feels good. Huh? XCloud works Age of well. Empires. No, I was talking about Halo. I was like, you're playing some Halo? All right. <laughs> um, congrats, <laughs> SD team. Now, my first thought about this was, hey, that's a thing you can put your little Game Pass thingy on. When I say little, just... For fun, because I know that's a very popular uh, bit of kit, and um, that's not as crazy as it sounds. It, it really isn't, because Microsoft has stated publicly that they want to put Game Pass on other consoles. The problem is, all the other consoles, as you might have guessed, said fuck right off. <laughs> Understandable. You don't want to like do that. However, Valve has also stated that they toyed with the idea of making a streaming-only Steam Deck. Mm-hmm. I, I, yeah, that, that that always that always sits wrong with me because I I view I mean admittedly it's been on my phone but I've used Steam streaming over Wi Fi and it is passable but if you're going to be playing like a Halo or something mm-hmm. you are not going to be able to do that but like I, to, to to your point Ben I I really figure that Microsoft doesn't want to fight a battle on two fronts if they can get their studios game sales I guess they really don't care what kind of computer you're running the games on as long as it isn't a PlayStation or a Switch that's right. the big thing. Um, like yeah. they, they have PC gaming lockdown. Like the, the steam, like the steam deck is not actively competing with anything. Microsoft is trying to do at the moment, at the moment, we, we might see them turn around <laughs> in a year or two, but for now, for now, it seems like they're willing to play ball. Um, and, and if I, that I picture is thing. anything to go by, uh, the, it, that that's running the, uh, uh, Linux install that we saw from all the other videos from all the other publications. And yeah, the big picture mode browser and the Steam browser itself, it's built on the Chromium embedded framework. So I do wonder yes. what the reason will be that the Windows fanboys will pull out of their ass to say that they need to install Windows on it for. Because they don't know how to run Linux. It's not... This is not Linux, Linux, it's Steam. You, you don't need to you're get like galaxy brain on this. I mean, these are people that... Just, Come on. There's not enough next buttons. Fuck it. I'm out. 
Um, <laughs> I, I, I wouldn't be surprised if people are more willing to use Windows than KDE. I'm just saying. Also, fair. that's the thing. If you're just using the thing as the handheld, it's just Steam Big Picture mode with a new UI. Pedro, you, but you don't look at KDE. You don't see KDE. But I can't run my but you pirate. Know there. Pedro, I can't run my pirate games through Proton with them. <laughs> tough titties <laughs> well you, you you might be able to play them with this proton, uh, proton. <laughs> yeah 6.36 rc not ge this is good old-fashioned proton i learned that if you want to get into um beta proton branches you actually have to go and enroll in the beta in steam it's not just the thing you got to download uh but they have a couple new games that are listed as launchable including um, Forza Horizon 2, Tokyo Xenadu, Sonic Adventure, Elite Res Infinite, Elite Dangerous, Blood of Steel, Star Wars Knights of the Old Republic, the first one, not the second one that has the native Linux version, and a few others. I had Elite, Elite Dangerous, Dangerous in my library. Yeah, I had it in my <laughs> library for, for a while, and I'm like, I haven't been able to play it, so... Uh, rather, I went through the process of hacking the line prefix to get it to launch because before you had to install like a hacked mono and there's like a bunch of registry edits you needed to do. It's, it's like the, the old fucking days, ordeal. right? So now, like looking yeah. at like so, setting something up with wine, you're like, nah. Yeah, but but <laughs> now, now it, you click play and it runs, which is nice, except yeah. I can't actually get into my game because I linked my Steam account to my Frontier account and... If you've been listening to the pre-pre super shows and I'm going back and forth between the frontier support, it's not Proton's <laughs> fault though. Uh, that, that's entirely on Elite Dangerous. I'm gonna blame that. Uh, the other big thing here is they're refactoring cloud save locations. Uh, this is to provide better compatibility between um, save locations for Linux native games and Proton games, and just to make sure that like your save game will appear in the appropriate location. They say though. We don't know how well this will work, though, so maybe turn off cloud saves or back up your save files if you're going to be running this uh, beta on something you care about. And they even bolded that out on the announcement, so just straight up expect this to nuke all of your cloud saves and save games. Just expect yeah. Scorched Earth if you're going to play with this. What I'm saying is don't play with this. Just or, 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 or do it on a clean prefix. Like, yeah. if, if you're just playing, yeah. if, you're, if you're trying to play Elite Dangerous, for example. Yeah. <laughs> uh, so uh steam vr has got an update that's got something kind of interesting in it yeah uh, this is the new release for steam vr it is 1.196 links to all this stuff is in our show notes uh you can float desktops in views in the world and move them around you can even use your face to do that using something called mm -hmm. face mouse i would which smash is my face into the wall so many times <laughs> Listen, Face Mouse is a great name for a crust punk band. That's all I'm saying. Uh, but you can also map the views to individual controllers. So you can have like the Tom Cruise minority report thing going. It's there are enhancements, right? I, I don't I don't know how well this actually works. Well, I like the uh, idea of being able to like, move around multiple desktops and rearrange them once the resolution gets there. But the me version of that's like, yes, you will have a smashed up face and busted up knuckles. Genius. <laughs> well, yeah, this, this, because this you'll is be why reaching, you, it's like, yeah, ah. be nugging shit off walls. This, this is why you need to have the dedicated hollow deck room with the padded walls. You can just dive in first. Wow, I knock stuff off my walls without VRs. <laughs> it's, no, yeah. uh, I, don't, yeah, I don't need an no, index I'm pretty to punch sure a hole through my TV. I, I really want to see somebody use face already mouse. have the Discord windows in like separate desktop views while playing games on Steam VR. Because even after uh, Valve reworked their friends thing, it do doesn't just. You know. <laughs> so yeah, that that's that's a thing. Mm. So it's mm. been a minute since we've had a little bit of Gary drama. Scary Gary. Yeah, this one is manufactured drama. To be fair, no, Pedro. I will <laughs> take a look at this. Oh, he deleted it. <laughs> uh, no, you didn't, motherfucker. It was on the internet. Too late. Um. So Gary Newman, you know, I'm a creator of Rust, uh, Gary's Mod and all that fun stuff. He uh, broke out on Twitter and he's like, Q, will you make a, what is, I guess it's supposed to be shitbox or something like that. Uh, sandbox. It's sandbox. like uh, okay. Gary's Mod, but for Source 2. Okay. Native Linux version. And uh, answer is no, Proton works right. Linux gaming Reddit. Narcissist lead and all, all these posts and... I honestly, I got curious. So I like went to the post and man, you, you cherry picking some shit there, man. Cause this is extremely tame. Like 99.9% mm -hmm. .9 of this is just people going, all right, whatever. Okay. I'm just I, I mean, like the, game. 
even the stuff in the, in the in the tweet itself is just people saying that he's a bad programmer. It's not like anyone's threatening his life. No, everybody's. I mean, they're chill. I'm sorry because the reason I bring that up, man. Um, I like I went into that thread with some popcorn. I'm like, oh, let's see some shit talking, internet drama, <laughs> Linux internet drama. This is a rare treat. Like the fuck, man. You you had to spend some time sorting through this to get those choice little bits, man. But hey, after all, it's Indie Gaming's favorite millionaire. Am I right, man? Uh, I was going to say Notch, but that's a B, not an M. Yeah, that's a B. <laughs> yeah, he's not, uh, <laughs> yeah, he's yeah, yeah. not a developer uh, anymore. <laughs> I mean, what, what, what went down, Gary? Like, did, did you just think to yourself, like, hey, man, it's been a minute since I, you know, like, punched down on people? <laughs> what? <laughs> <laughs> well, like, I, 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 I said this in, in, in Discord earlier in the week when I think Artharon post. Yeah, Artharon post. Yeah. Big Thank ups you. to Artharon. Remember, if you're a Patreon, you can suggest stories like this and we'll talk about them. Yes. Um, so, yeah, Ar- Artharon posted that. I'm like, oh, wow. You know, I've been historically anti- I've been historically antagonistic to this group, this demographic, and they've been mad at me. So I'm going to be more antagonistic to them. And mm hmm. I don't know. Oh, confirmation bias. Oh, good job, Gary. It's the Arrested (laughs) Development bit where he opens up the fridge and there's a bag that says, don't open, dead dove inside. He opens it up and is like, I don't know what I expected. Yeah, no, at this point, it's did, did, did he get too good a reception from the Linux community after he said that he was working? Uh, with Valve to get EAC working in this Proton. This got me thinking, Pedro um, Mateus. This got me thinking, because historically, like, it's one of Gary's high side hobbies, man, is like, hey, let's shut on Linux and spark up the internet, and they get... So it's one of two things. One, don't delete your tweets, or you'll be doomed. You, you'll never grow as a human being. I've said some dumb shit on Twitter before. More than once. Oh, yeah, it teaches you. <laughs> you leave that shit up. Because you think about it, it reminds you the next time you're like, fuck, I don't want to do that again. These motherfuckers go around always deleting shit after going on rants and they don't learn anything. They don't ever grow as a human being. I'm just saying that's my personal experience. But here's my thought was like, do do we have all the positive energy and all the rolling coming with the Gabe gear coming out that everyone's like, hey, man, Linux is okay. He didn't get the uh, positive reinforcement of everyone going, Linux, No, he didn't. He wasn't. It wasn't getting his confirmation bias from everyone saying, oh, yeah, no, thanks. That's awesome. You're doing an awesome job and actually helping Linux. And he went, oh, shit, I'm actually helping Linux. Right. Uh, time to shit on them. Uh, I'm going to say no to a native build, and then I'm Jordan, going to cherry pick be, be, shit. Be, 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 <laughs> beyond, beyond this, the basic core content of the tweet is I get you get asked, hey, are you going to do this thing to help a platform? And the response is no, I'm not, because I don't have to do the work because Proton. Yeah. People... Didn't didn't like the, the don't the, like that answer. It's not a great answer. We're 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 glad that Proton exists. We're glad that we can play games under Linux. But if you're gonna say, oh well, you know, it's not worth my effort, then don't uh, expect like super happy responses from that. Now I get to do I, one thing. The second thing I thought was, you know, like the text in that tweet, nothing would have been said of it. It's all the screenshots of like picking out, and, like you know, because guess what? There's going to be some assholes on the internet. Um, but deleting the tweet, I'm on, I don't follow Gary. You know, Gary sent his copies of Rust way back Rust, when. Yeah. Forever ago. Yeah. Um, but I wonder if just, just maybe, just, just maybe, <laughs> possibly Valve had something to do with that. You're like, yo, yo, you should <laughs> oh, I'm Linux. sorry. Do you want money? Then delete. <laughs> Speculation. Could just, be. Yeah. Just, I I, 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 I think it's just good old fashioned cowardice, but eh. Eh, possibly (laughs) or yeah, someone pointed it out like, um, really? Seriously? Just really? (laughs) What I'm going to say is like, give it another six to eight months, then go back to shitting on Linux. Just this is Linux is having its moment thing right now. We'll, we'll be back here in January having yeah. this discussion again. <laughs> uh, but we'll probably be playing Pocket Cars. Yes, well, uh, maybe. Uh, it's, it's one of those games that will be in early access for a while still. Although, update version not point seventy eight, and they did skip not point seventy six and not point seventy seven. Those were They went builds. straight to... Yeah, uh, it. Um, this one comes with new four cars, two buggies, and two street-type cars. What whatever the, they that's those. a boat. That's not a car. <laughs> that is a boat, but without the extra things, it has wheels. Uh, but yeah, what, what, what is a car five... if, a boat, if not just a boat with wheels? 
It, it, I would have gone is the other it, way around, but okay. <laughs> or impeller. But yeah, it is. Uh, it it has horns now and customizable horns too. Uh, and the uh, I did try the horns. Uh, there was a <laughs> spooky one that I actually enjoyed. There's a spooky horn. And uh, the one thing that kind of, Boo. the thing that kind of jumped out at me the most was the updated hotkey for custom event create button. Does that mean what I think it means? Because I don't think it does. <laughs> I don't know what the fuck you think it means, so feel free to enlighten us. <laughs> I was thinking when we tried to play it um, multiplayer, you said you wanted to create like your own custom tournament sequence of races. Yes, thing. after after I got done bitching about not having bots in the multiplayer for 30 minutes. Yes. <laughs> so that's what I think it, it would mean. But I had a look through the, I tried to create a um, multiplayer game and I didn't see the option and I didn't see a hotkey to create a custom playlist of tracks. So I'm, I I guess it doesn't. How about if you're wondering like, what's the experience of the game at Super Tux Kart uh, or Mario Kart with uh, slightly enhanced graphics, uh, same principle. Nothing terribly special, but hey, if they ever get it done or add some bots, we'd go back and play it because it's kind of boring when it's just me and Pedro and multiplayer. Yeah. Yeah. It's Revolt without the really good, awesome soundtrack. What's S2? Is that like, oh man, that must be like some budget Amazon Team Fortress then because this is Team Fortress. Yeah. (laughs) TFS does sound. No, no. TFS is a Microsoft service. That's their Git. The I had to I had to, funny story I had to unpair <laughs> right. that from an Active Directory domain once. Don't do that. <laughs> don't don't do it. Microsoft doesn't want you to do that for a reason because it's fucking hard and it breaks shit. Anyways, tangent aside, Team Fortress Source Two. It's not TF Two. It's better. Uh, so this is by a group of fans. Uh, they're saying, well, we like playing Team Fortress Two. It's it's running on an old ass source engine. There was some talk about Valve maybe porting sor- uh, TF2 to the Source 2. We don't know anything about that. It's Valve time. Things are going on behind the scenes. So a group of uh, intrepid modders have decided, well, let's start porting all the gameplay and the assets to Source 2 and see how far we can get. And I guarantee you Valve is watching this with great interest because if they can pull it off, mm-hmm. they're going to be like, ha, huh, that's a shit ton of work we don't have to do. You're hired. Um, however, I, I, w- there's, there's a caveat about this. If they start going after hats, I think Valve will take exception to this. Possibly. I mean, there is something to be said with like the talent to, I'm not, I'm not shitting on Valve, but I'm just talking about like reality. I, to make a game like TF2 or update it, we saw like Left 4 Dead, the new map came from the community. Mm-hmm. It didn't come from Valve because mm-hmm. I don't think the people there either, maybe I shouldn't say or interest. They're, they're working on Back for Blood. That's that's what happens. Yeah. Well, Valve South. <laughs> um, uh, this this is neat. Pedro immediately shit on it when I posted a link in the Discord and said I was stupid. For I even did posting because I I've seen many many mods and many many attempts to recreate uh, games and other games, so effectively just complete conversion mods that create a website they post a blog post or two and then they go radio silent and the project five years later is completely dead and no one's doing anything anymore Mm -hmm. so my first reaction was oh i wonder if they're going to keep uh updating this because it is nice it would be very nice to see and like jordan already said if they do a good enough job, Valve's just going to go, you know what? You're now our employees. That is our thing. You keep developing it and you can sell hats now. All hats. If it's good enough. <laughs> I, I mean, I, I, I got to give Valve credit because like you look at a fucking company like Oracle who like you even thought about reverse engineering our shit and we will send a fucking bunch of lawyers after you versus Valve's like, hey, you reverse engineered our shit. You want a job? You used our API? <laughs> yeah. The fuck, man? The fuck? <laughs> oh, I- do you want to sell that thing that you built with our stuff on our store? Yeah, go ahead. Valve yep. is about <laughs> as cool as you can get with being a soulless corporation. I mean, yep. yeah, 100%. All right. Well, coming up next, you can finally look forward to buying that brand new NVIDIA card. Yeah. Oh, boy. It's so small. It's so tiny. We don't start with drivers for the news this week, but it's, well, it's technically a new GPU that you probably still won't be able to buy, but hey, it is. But, but what, what's the tuning on it? Right. 
<laughs> what key is How do you tune your ground? <laughs> yeah. I don't know. As we've established uh, during the pre pre uh, Super Chosen, uh, I hit puberty and <laughs> my voice kind of broke at one point. So there's that. Did, but did you, hey, wait a minute. Maybe Hang you on. hit no, puberty. We need to talk about something important. <laughs> did you get like one of those laptop stand things? Uh, no, that is uh, the stand that I have usually my phones on. I just happened to have the netbook on there because I was using it earlier. Oh. And I just moved it out of the yeah. way and now it's there. It's the uh, Toshiba. I actually, I actually <laughs> did put a laptop stand on this desk because I got tired of using books. Did you? I, the books I later. was looking at uh, monitor arms just because they were... And my, they make uh, like a dual arm for like 35 bucks that has the laptop stand and a monitor arm on, like all in one. Yeah, nice. I thought it'd be perfect for Pedro, but Pedro's like, no, I like taking up my desk space with monitor stands. <laughs> he, he, no, he's I need to get to build a house out of laptops one day. These two? <laughs> uh, yeah, I have bigger monitors than you do on arms, like right here in the studio. You, you see that one? That one's 28 fuck mothering inches. It's on a monitor. It, it, yeah, the, the, probably so one of them, but that'll take the two of them in one arm. That That's the big one. Yeah, the, each arm well, can hold 38 fucking pounds, man. Okay, cool. Right. Well, if you if you want to tell us how big your monitor is and how many pounds your arms can weigh, you can uh, maybe uh, maybe go to our uh, Patreon and send us a message. Patreon.com slash Linux Gamecast. <laughs> Become a member. You get cool stuff for it. Um, you can... Uh, Base level, you get access to our Discord. Same if you uh, sub to us on Twitch, so definitely click that, that subscribe button. Smash it. Um, but smash it, fam. Smash that bell. Uh, if you pay us two fifty a week, uh, you get access to the show notes. Uh, a little bit more, you get the executive producer level, which gets you your... Uh, well, all the levels get you your name and your credits, but you get the live video feed for the pre-pre-super shows, in, which is... In this case, was just us trying to figure out how to get Discord working for video. <laughs> right. But some, sometimes it's other stuff. You, you never know. It's kind of like a potpourri. Dude, of, it is a, uh, let's call it a variety crime. show. Yeah. <laughs> but you do get yeah. it in podcast right. format. So there is that. That's, if you, if you need you, four hours of background noise of people talking about technology, Linux, and whatever the hell else we come up with, we got you covered. Yo. Indeed. Um, we got we got to thank our brand newest Patreon, Gamematron. Yes. Um, so thank, thanks a bunch for thank that. You. Give it, thank you. Thanks for giving us all that money. <laughs> Game. Uh, we, got, we got a store as well. I don't know. Store. George just tried to skip over this. Pedro, you have to come up with a very uh, real oh, yeah. true right. fact about Gamotron that no one else knows. This is going to be a secret. Uh, <laughs> a Gamotron true is facts. actually the prototype unit from the Gamotron series. Uh, the actual production model was Gamotron 9000. Mm. So, yeah, no. Apparently, the um, the prototype is, went. Is this just some like, like the retro? Is this some like British TV <laughs> show that I'm just not aware of? I have no fucking clue. <laughs> it was just has to come up with what? something on the spot. <laughs> I'm like, talk, talking about. It. Listen, there are weird like European TV shows. One might be called Game Motron. You can't deny that. Could be. Right. <laughs> It's Brazilian, man. Absolutely. Hey, if you want to put us all over your face, chest, and neck, we have a store over at store.lenningschemecast.com. You can get, guess what? Shirts, stickers, mugs, other paraphernalia that will anger and confuse friends and family. We don't have LGC bongs, though. At a very reasonable price. Like my um, sensor stickler, because I wanted to cover fuck up with hell, and I've accomplished (laughs) my goal here. (laughs) That's how Vin Stone rolls, baby. Hey. Uh, ah, censorship mayo. <laughs> one thing that we have always, not always had, I didn't add it to like six years in, we have Amazon wish zones and it, it's a horribly bad idea, but some of you think if it's a good idea, you see this nonsense back here. That's where I will shame you personally for your fiscal irresponsibility. And, um, you get to send a note. We read that nonsense out. And since I do it, Pedro and Jordan have their own zones of wish. Everything I have is just boring studio stuff. You can find some weird shit on both of theirs so uh and just go creep also finally if you are curious about well, um what we have put together in the studio you know all this has been itemized head over to linkscamecast.com hit the about section and you can see all the gear in the studio i don't care where you buy it i'm not telling you to buy it off amazon buy it off newegg or whoever else uh don't do it with newegg or you they'll probably put it in with an exploding power <laughs> yeah, supply. yeah they'll give you an exploding power supply yeah Speaking, speaking, speaking of wishlists, though, uh, we have other wish lists as well. Like I have one on Steam, so does Pedro. Um, if you want to get, get a stuff off that as well. Uh, that's what Kai Linux did for me. He bought me a copy of Borderlands 3. Thank you very much, Kentucky Linux, for that. 
Uh, Pedro, you got some stuff too. <laughs> I did not. <laughs> no. Mm. No, was, was, was it that's all you and Ven right there. <laughs> all right. I got a copy of Kentucky Linux Grime, which is a game <laughs> that I think Pedro would really enjoy. And uh, that's a, uh, it's a Metroidvania. I did have a look at it after you talked about it on uh, Wednesday. It's like, okay, let's have, oh yeah, no, that, yeah. Mm-hmm. Maybe we'll be checking that out. And Arthurian, basically, I, I was talking about I'm almost done playing Horizon Ginger Turbo. I actually uninstalled it when I get home this afternoon because I'm done with like the Frozen Wilds and I still barely hit level 40, which is what you're supposed to be to walk into that area. Um, mm. I needed the open world fuck around game. I always like to have one playing around, you know, Mad Max, Batman, that style of game. And he picked up uh, Days Gone, which is like Daryl simulator where i get to ride around on my chopper and zombies all right yes <laughs> no, no, zombie, fetuses, uh, no. <laughs> maybe i'll have a crossbow that'll be very very entertaining <laughs> thank you everyone uh for letting us do what we do we don't have any corporate financing you're it and uh yeah that's how we get to keep being us you might not like what we say but you're you know awesome. we believe it <laughs> is that it are we good are we cool? I guess uh, so. I think so. Let, 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 let's get into the... Ah! Oh, this isn't cool, though. Th- this is going to get toasty. No, this, Real quick. this <laughs> is hilarious. You can't stop laughing, according to PC Gamer. Uh, this is the A2000. <gasps> it's fucking adorable. It is. Um, this is NVIDIA's new RTX that is going to be coming out, and it is pint-sized. It is... Size comparison, gentlemen. What, what, what's... Uh, it, it, it's... The, it's it's very itty bitty. I I w- I had a similar reaction. I got like a low profile 750 Ti for the Steam box like forever mm-hmm. ago, and I was I was genuinely shocked about how itty okay. bitty it is. Size I am desperately trying to find a photo. What we're looking for, uh, Pedro, you want to take a step? <laughs> it's uh, for the think audio about listeners. like half yeah. the size. Uh, half the size of a uh, regular GPU, like you, you get the PCB size. It's about half of that. So yeah, the uh, low profile cards. This is the think about quadro it without the quadro. Have you name ever on seen it? a jumbo like a multi pack of chewing gum? Those packages. It's about like that. Now, what's inside of it though? It's kind of cut down. It's nothing you're going to be really wanting to break about. Inside, uh, 3,300 CUDA cores, 104 tensor cores, 26 RT cores, 6 gigajoules of memory RAM, 192 bit though, uh, 288 gigabytes a second, PCIe 4 by 16, and it only sucks 70 watts. 70 watts. Mm. Yeah, no, that's almost uh, 3060, but only pulling 70 watts. That's PCIe power. Uh huh. That would probably destroy the 1650. Thank you very much for that, Arthur. And by the way, that is in the Steam box. But um, I'm pretty sure that one blower fan is going to be even louder. This is what I'm going to be touching on because I've already seen backs already thrown in. Like, yeah, maybe an HTPC. And uh, this has a single blower. And also, you look at the thickness of it. Uh, it, it's a shouty quadro design, which means it's fucking loud, kids. Like the quadro I have which has a much bigger heat sink. Uh, I can't even have that in the studio inside of a box, not like a Swiss cheese box, but a closed PC with a fan on like Stufu low as it'll go without melting. It's still too loud. So this thing is going to be extremely shouty. Why? Because that fan's smaller. It's going to be a nice little <laughs> buzzsaw. Noctu is not going to be able to help you out of this one, kids. Here, here's, here's the thing though. Um, since it's a workstation card, do you, do you think it's going to be low hash rate? I don't, I don't think so, which doesn't really bode well for the availability, but Hey, no one's listening to those fans in the server room where those cards are plugged into arrays mining Bitcoin. Yeah. Um, with workstation, if this is going to be used as workstation, either they got some new thermal voodoo or it comes with earplugs or, um, (laughs) if you're using it for mining, yeah, it does come down to availability, though, doesn't it? Um, yeah. yeah. At, at, again, at this at this point, the best video card you can get on the market is the one that you can get your hands on. So this this is true. Yeah. I, I am curious about the um, not the two thousand, but the new seven thousand they're coming out with, which is uh, basically a thirty seventy with more memory RAM. 
in that same form factor, which means it's still going to be shouty and it's probably going to cost like 1400 bucks. I like looking at quadros. I can't afford them, but you think <laughs> there's going to be some aftermarket blocks for those to address that. Or, uh... the, you know, people have 3d printed, uh, like the K series, like the ones mm-hmm. that are designed for, um, like for you servers, chassis, the ones that have, mm-hmm. you need forced induction, like from the fan rail at the mm-hmm. front. Or the melt. Yeah, they made some really neat, like 3D printed, like clip ons that you can still, yeah, life finds a way is what I'm saying. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Th- this one is effectively a quadro. It just doesn't have the quadro branding. I'm guessing it didn't pass mustard. So they figured, let's just remove the quadro. Maybe Bitch, make the it's, price it's a Luigi. Bit more accessible. It, it's, no, it's, it's the Waldro. <laughs> <laughs> Listen, are, are you are you the expecting Rodrick consistency Waldrop. with Nvidia and naming? Andrew, you're the one who's always ra- railing about the Titan, the Titan, the Titan, the Titan, the Titan. So and the shield and the shield and the shield and the shield. Basically, blow red so, in means uh, shouty. Uh, pos- <laughs> and if it's like that thick, if it's at least six inches thick, uh, quadro. Yeah, it's too slot. Yeah, <laughs> too slot. Can you stick it in your inches. Amiga though? Uh, possibly. <laughs> Probably, yeah. But, yeah, Amiga is too big and too old and too hipstery, and you don't want to mess around with it. So check this out. Retro Games will release an Amiga 500 mini console <laughs> in 2022, which, you know, this thing's probably going to look at Zool. Going to be running Linux and something like that. And, um, yeah, I just wanted to give it a mention. I thought that was uh, kind of entertaining. Did, did we get a scale mm-hmm. of how tiny it is in this video? Okay, it comes, there's Not the controller. Really. The, 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 yeah, those you are all kind of. Where, where, where's the banana? Well, okay, that's the legitimate Amiga mouse. So, and that's the Amiga controller. Uh, yeah, so it's it's slightly larger than uh, an Amiga controller, the OG one. Um, not OG, OG, but you know what I'm talking about the four button deal. So the, um, the size of three of these mice. I'm. Would, yeah. Okay, here here's the here's the catch, uh, Pedro. You had the same reaction I did when you read a certain part of the uh, article. Yeah, like the start of the second paragraph. Users can forgo the unit's tiny keys by plugging in their own USB keyboard. That's a usable keyboard? Uh Uh-huh. What? (laughs) That's because, you know, the C64 Mini that these people also uh, released, that was not a usable keyboard. That was just a piece of plastic shaped like keys. Mm -hmm. Eh? (laughs) Okay, okay. Now, I kind of want one if that's a real fucking keyboard. Just... Because, <laughs> like, it's like this big, and but it's a keyboard for ants. Yeah, here's the here's what I'm thinking is use a pen. The entirety <laughs> of like the number pad would be the on switch, and like the other side's the off or reset. You know what I'm, I'm, saying? I'm thinking of that one bit from The Simpsons where it's just like the number you're you've been unable to dial the number because you're too fat to obtain a special dialing wand. Mash the keyboard again. <laughs> That, that sort of shit. I don't know. If it's a real keyboard, uh, I guarantee you people will bitch that it's not clicky. <laughs> <laughs> or it's too clicky. And people will make switches for it. Micro. They, they will get like fucking switches out of gerbils and put them in there just so they think. I'm sure that will be at least I, a one-off keyboard just for that one YouTube video that will have a working keyboard and a teeny tiny little thing. And then Linus Tech Tips will try to fucking water cool it. It'll be brilliant. All right? <laughs> <laughs> uh, and install Windows on it. That's the other one. Right. Mm-hmm. DXVK Native. What the hell is this? Yeah. So this is from Joshi. He posted this on Twitter uh, earlier in the week. Uh, and you've seen this before if you have played Portal or Left 4 Dead recently and used the Vulcan Render. This is DXVK Native. And what it does is it lets you use DXVK minus wine. Uh, it, uses, it uses SDL2 for the windowing. Uh, you just need to add another WSI backend to support this. And the idea is you can use this as a drop-in replacement for a DirectX 11 to speed up your ports or to speed up your Linux ports or more specifically your Steam Deck ports because I think this is where they're really going to be pointing it towards. Um, but yeah, there it has all the good DXVK stuff that you know and love. Um, apparently a couple other, uh, games were built using this, including perimeter, which is an open source one on Linux and a couple of the ease, which are apparently an action JRPG thing. Um, the, the, well, those the are the stadia, stadia versions using that on the back end. Yeah. yeah. So that's, that's interesting, but this, this fulfills valve's promise of providing developers tools to utilize Vulkan in their games. We they were saying that like years ago when the steam yeah. machines were first coming out and they're saying like, Vulcan, we, we need to focus on providing good tooling for developers. DX12 so is the future, bro. So, 
Bro. Yeah, so, dicks I mean, love, it, it, bro. it is. You, you, you use it through Vulcan, through Dix Fix. That's how, it, that's the future of it. Um, yeah, yeah, so hopefully, is, hopefully some studios will put this to work. But it one, is one thing, very one much thing we like do a need, though, DIY. Go ahead. Is <laughs> audio middleware. That's the, that's apparently the big thing for getting Linux ports. Audio middleware. They can't get it ported unless it's FMOD sometimes. Now, the main reason I threw yeah. this in the show notes is Josh, he was very proud to point out. I was like, hey, now it has enhanced readme technology. So, mm. <laughs> yes. Documentation. Then, documentation. documentation. <laughs> but yeah, it is very much a DIY. If you remember the feral ports, they were using IndirectX and Valve's own games. They were using Toggle previously. This is the same, except instead of translating DirectX to OpenGL, it translates it to Vulkan using the DXVK technology that you've already been using if you've been playing games with Proton. And it works. <laughs> Go figure. All right. <laughs> yeah. And yeah, the, 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 the problem here is actually getting developers to use it. That's kind of the, the main thing now that uh, Valve's just... kind of trying to take care of that with this little thing that's coming out over the holidays. That's pro, proton, yeah, yeah, proton. I don't know. <laughs> yeah, proton. Th- th- you don't need to port your games; it'll just run fine. Listen Stick to Gary Newman. Go around for the hate mail section. Uh, we got some thoughts on that SDL. <laughs> we got a new version that does things. Yes, uh, version two o sixteen is currently out, and um, the first one that jumped them my uh my eyes uh, conveniently enough was sdl flash window to get a user's attention yes get a user's attention and give them a moment's pause as they wonder free what the hell just broke no what the hell is breaking that that window is now blinking at me (laughs) and then they realize oh that's a thing and um yes Uh, i have no idea uh but the um the other thing I notice is since I have both the DualShock 4 and the fi- the DualSense, uh, the, now there's actual support for the sensor data rate, so you can get that natively into the game, which in the case of the DualSense is especially interesting because that thing has a um, heart rate monitor built into uh, some places around the handles. So I look forward to games making use of that with SDL. Also feeling a little bit creeped out. <laughs> it's pretty neat, man. Uh, 2016, better Wayland support. We're happy to see that. And it's got support for the pipes, the pipe wires, the Super Mario audio system. And um, most importantly, it now has added support for the Amazon Luna game controller. You know, the one that you should be buying right now. The Switch Pro. Popping yeah. that motherfucker off into a closet for the next two decades and selling it for a mint. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So, uh, or, or you can just get a sticker kit for the Switch Pro controller. I mean, that's the same thing. Yeah, because, you know, people who like buy collectible bullshit fall for that, right? Sometimes. I, it wouldn't be the first Ladies time. Ladies and nope. gentlemen, on, <laughs> on behalf of everyone, don't buy collectible shit from Jordan with his fake stickers all over stuff. <laughs> you, you, I mean, I never said you should. <laughs> I, will, I will happily take your money for nothing, though. Uh, and zero <laughs> AD for free. Indeed. Imagine a world where open source games remain relatively high quality and continue to get updates. Uh, so zero AD alpha 2.5 Yana, which is apparently a Persian word for the Ionians, the, uh, the old (laughs) name for Greeks. Uh, but very, very small, uh, release notes, uh, this time around, usually they're a lot larger, but they have, they're also a little, uh, scattered in terms of ordering, but they've improved uh, pathfinding for units. Uh, you can requeue, uh, you can rearrange units in your uh, construction queue. They've also improved the unit AI a little bit. Uh, there's some better pathfinding. Uh, and hey, you can uh, reduce your lag over net play and even filter multiplayer games, which was, you know, nice to have in your multiplayer strategy game. So, uh, so yeah, this is continuing to chug along. It's available for free. One of the high, I would say the highest quality open source game out there at the moment. I think it's um, and if easily. you're looking at just the graphics, yes. <laughs> We've been uh, tracking zero eighty hell, man, since I was doing VO work on their damn trailers. Uh, but so like version three, four, alpha, somewhere in there. <laughs> it's it's been a it's while. Still an alpha, so we've, still we've been talking about it. <laughs> we've been talking about it as long as I've been on the show. So yeah, 
Um, <laughs> it, it's come so far, so far. And uh, none of us have the patience to sit down and play it. <laughs> not no. not the type of game that any of us are interested in. You nope. know what? I, I I like the idea of the game, but they need like the speed chess version of that. Because I've sit to play multiplayer. I'm like, this is taking too fucking long, man. Like we we need an hour each to get ready <laughs> before we even think about dicking well, with that, each that, other. That that's that's why Civ has like play by email mode so that yeah, you get right? an email when it's your turn. <laughs> <laughs> you know what? For all we know, it might have that. So. uh yeah, I I, th- I think it actually does. We, I think we may have talked about it. Keep one of up. them does. I don't know if it's zero AD, but I, one of the open source strategy games does have that. <laughs> so is somebody gonna fuck around and come out with like a one AD? Like ooh, uh, yeah, that, I mean that's the sequel. <laughs> yeah, it's in the future. <laughs> they're they're they're, they're, gonna, they're gonna pull an EA Sports and just release the same game with a slightly different. No skin, man, skin it, it takes place millions of years in the future, in like 1972. It's open source, right? It's just yeah. going to be the fork. Someone's no. going to go. No, I'm going to finish this before they do. Pedro, one eighty. We replace like, all well, of the grass. One, one we replace time. all of the grass with shag carpet. <laughs> I'm down. I, as long as I don't have to clean that, I'm down. AstroTurf, the whole a thing. A full Chevy conversion van with a wizard painted on the side will be a unit. Yes. I, I, I would play this game. You, you're, you're, you're joking, but I'm, 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 I want to subscribe to your newsletter. Get to those mods, baby. Indeed. Coming up next, here we stand, worlds apart, heartbroken in two. 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 Dos. Throwing chairs at Unbound. Pedro, what, what's the Portuguese word for two? Man, I, I I really like Journey, but I don't want to get DMCA'd. So we're just going to get into uh, the Chairquisition this week. We're taking a look at Unbound Worlds Apart, developed by Alien Pixel Studios, done on Unreal Engine 4. What? Legas. You can pick it up for about $20. Oh, yeah. That doesn't support Linux. Uh, summon portals to overcome <laughs> vicious beasts de- Devious puddles and fiendish platforming challenges. Master the unique powers of each portal to stop the collapse of reality while exploring lush, hand-drawn worlds and unraveling a deep lush. narrative full of mysteries. Um, they did send us some keys over Curator Connect, so big thank you to Alien Pixel Studios. And I guess let's. I guess we're just going in order because we all gave it the same score. So I yeah. Guess oh, spoilers. Uh, all right. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> we got three minutes. That bomb clock starts now. I had zero problems, and I mean zero, because this is absolutely well done. It even picked up the Xbox S1 X S1 controller uh, after the game started. Unreal Engine 4. Oh, kind of amazing. And it is using the Vulcan sauce. That's the thing with UE4 now. It's going to poop out Vulcan ports on Linux. Did I mention it was UE4? All right. Uh, now, I only tested this at 1080p with VSync, but I didn't notice uh, any significant dimps, uh, even when streaming. That's on a 1920X Threadripper 32 gigs RAM and a 2060. And uh, yeah, that that's that. Let's talk about the fun. Because for me, I can usually get a feel for a game simply by the quality of the start menu. And um, it, it's that attention to detail. You know, the good background music mixed with like solid visuals and those sound effects when you're just navigating the main menu and pressing a button brings me like right back to like how Hollow Knight felt the first time I started it up. And I hit it and went, boom, like when I went into the options, like, oh, shit, that's fancy. Um, that said, Unbound is more like a uh, offense only. Well, no, how do I was? Yeah, offense only Ori. That's probably the best way to say it. And, you know, watching the trailer, I was kind of worried. I was because uh, the universe switching mechanic, that ball thought it would get old. Spoilers, it don't. Uh, not even a little bit, you know, about, um, let's see, 60 minutes into the game, uh, unbound, it turns into like Celeste light. It turns into that kind of where Pedro started out in the video. If you're watching the video version where you start flying, man. And, uh, that's when things really got interesting for me. And you go back and watch the live stream I did by interesting. I mean, fuck this game. God damn it. This. All right. And I'm having a good time then. It's not obvious, but I was having a good time. And you learn how to kill baddies. You fly, all that fun stuff. If you dick puzzle platformers, I'm going to say give this a look. You got the solid art. You got the good music. You got those tight controls. And hey, native Linux build. Good on you lot. Uh, I think this is definitely going to be a must-have for your Gabe gear. Check it out. <sighs> Three cheers. Yay. Yeah. 
on Fedora 34, 64 bit with the R9 3900X and GX 1080 Ti. It launches out of the box. It holds 68 UHD, but oh boy, those upscaled 720p cutscenes, though. Oh, I what the hell was going on with those, Ben? Yeah, they weren't even upscaled. They were just like stretched out. <laughs> yeah, there's, mm-hmm. yeah, that like, was that, that was, that was, that was. <laughs> That was, that was real bad. Um, Control-wise, DualShock 4 works out of the box with Steam input, although you do got to deal with the Xbox buttons. I really like the art design. The monsters look like they came straight out of Doom, which is, like, pretty good for, like, the cute little fuzzy. And then that's a fucking caco demon. Um, it works. Uh, the soundtrack is just kind of there. It does a good enough job of, like, conveying the mood. It's all ethereal and fantasy-esque but there's no real bangers on the soundtrack so mm, we'll give it an okay um fun wise yeah normally i really don't like precision platformers but gosh darn if this one didn't didn't grow on me i suppose it's really because they just checkpoint the ever-loving fuck out of everything so there isn't a lot of backtracking if you do die um the different portals are neat i really hate the shadow realm one um, that the one that's based on like, <laughs> oh, you gotta like stop moving for a while, and then here's a bunch of like mm-hmm. lava dodge puzzles. So have fun with that. That that was not. Oh, the cute little butterflies. Oh my god. Uh, yeah. Oh yeah. That those those are those are good. Um, <laughs> and like yeah, it it goes to show how you can still innovate on platforming mechanics because. Yeah, there's a lot of precision involved, but they give you quite a wide array of tools to do and a lot of different challenges. The pace that they unveil new stuff is pretty consistent. And by the time you're starting to get tired of the one thing you're dealing with, they move on to something new. The obstacles don't overstay their welcome, except when they come back like the little fireflies come and like, oh, in the flying segments. Oh, now I got to dodge those. Fuck. Yeah, so it, it's it's fun. It's it's enjoyable. Um and it's it's actually pretty accessible as far as um, precision platformers go. So I'm going to give it three cheers. I think this is this is definitely a good a good game. So check it out. Yep. And over here on the uh, Ryzen 7 3700X with the GTX 1080, it launched out of the box. V-Sync is a damn lie. It just caps the FURPS at 60 and doesn't actually sync them to the refresh rate. Otherwise, and we've seen other UE4 games do this, it would cap it at 144 like this monitor can do. All the controllers, uh, and I found this out because I went, before I even started the game, I just right-clicked on it to check the... Um, the settings on the Steam input, and uh, Steam input is on by default the moment you install it, as set by the developer. And to their credit, both the DualShock 4 and the DualSense worked out of the box. The graphics, they graphicked, and the sounds, they they sounded. So, as far as I'm concerned, other than the little hiccup with the V-Sync, we're good. Look at and you trying to cheese every single millimeter of this game. <laughs> that's, the, that's the entire point of this game. <laughs> yeah, it's kind of kind of what they encourage you to do. So, <laughs> but yeah, as for the fun, and if it wasn't obvious already, yes, it is fun. I'm usually the one who doesn't like platformers, and uh, are you well, saying I, you enjoy this? Part I don't like them. I, this one took me, uh, as you can see, a little bit of doing. Uh, but I got through it, this on it, a live it, stream, and I don't know how. It was just pure <laughs> rage. It, it took me a while to figure out. It's like, okay, so you got to go low, but you can't have the portal open just that long. But yeah, the um, it, I, I'm guessing not being hips or pixel, not being a hips or pixel platformer helps significantly because I'm really tired of those. This. With Unbound, they took the interesting concept of games like Limbo with the reverse um, gravity. VVVV, same thing. Uh, Snapshot with the going to different dimensions to see different things. Guacamelee, same kind of concept. And I'm sure many, many others. And they put them directly under your control. They give you that added agency by give putting you in control of all those mechanics. The limited uh, visibility, the reversing gravity, moving objects, and dealing with enemies that are far stronger than you. I mean, you're a child. So, yeah, you have all that agency. And as much as I keep bitching about um, how much I will like a platformer if it actually improves the formula, well, (laughs) as it turns out, I do. I still think Hollow Knight is better, but this one's pretty good. So, three chairs. (laughs) All right. Pedro, you have a bit of a colliery here. (laughs) Don't you? I, I do. It's just because uh, when the devs, uh, they actually sent us keys via Curator Connect, and they, uh, uh, Sergio, was, which was the programmer um, that actually sent us the keys, was like, oh yeah, we're a small team of like three uh, people. And they brought a really nice game built on Unreal Engine 4 to Linux. 
This is the game that I'm going to use as an example to call bullshit whenever someone says, oh, we couldn't possibly bring the game to Linux. Yep. We're a small little it's indie a billion team. dollars. Well, you know, I usually like drag a Hollow Knight out for that. But hey, man, Sergio, I, Pedro would rather gnaw his own arm off or the universe will die of heat death than ask you if you ever want to come on the show and talk to everyone about that awesome experience or maybe that doable experience. <laughs> I would love to get that story recorded and uh, join us on the show one afternoon or evening but yeah you, you you guys gals whoever's in the mix did a fantastic bang up job on this especially considering you did it with ue4 because this is something we will be dragging out as an example of it's possible like hollow knight did for unity it's like hey you can make tight controls you can make this work performance you did it with you unreal engine 4 so well done Indeed. Yep. <laughs> big, big round of applause to the devs. Good good job, guys. Coming up next, we get serious about the And since somehow we still don't find ourselves in the midst of some weird controversy, because let's be honest, we're pretty tiny no, on baby, YouTube. We, you we, could change that. We are shoving <laughs> anti-dandruff shampoo up alien butts. <laughs> Uh, take the leg. Uh, Brought but, to you by yeah, Salsa Blue. Yeah. What I'm saying is become a patron and you'll get the full uncut <laughs> version of that because that's a true story. <laughs> yes. Uh, but if you're not a uh, Patreon and you'd still like to get in touch with us, the best way you can do that is to go to loosegamecast.com. There's a contact button and a form. Just uh, there's some caveats you might want to read at the top of the uh, the contact page. If you don't read them and then we don't, end up addressing your thing or we just mock you that's well you pro that's on you <laughs> no, what i want you yeah. to do is confuse me with black magic technical support <laughs> i i mean to be fair they're more likely to get a real response out of you than black magic technical this support, this is so. fair but there is this one dude who has just decided it's clicked in his head that i'm the linux support for black magic like this, this is the emails I'm getting with like bug reports and stuff. Oh. Also, the other dude who like sent in some hate mail to tell me that he's thinking about putting a computer and building like a for you rock computer. Don't do it for your audio stuff. I, I went down that path, thought about it, and thought better of it. But we got two little bits of hate mail this week. The first mm -hmm. one is uh, oh, this is kind of addressed to Pedro and I. Yeah. It's from Tashan, <laughs> and it says, I take it you won't be doing a full playthrough of your multiplayer co-op playthrough of Black Mesa. Huh. Say playthrough again. Playthrough. Damn it. <laughs> so here's... I'll do, I'll do it one more time. Playthrough. Wait, hang on. One more time. Can you do it a little louder? I wonder if he's really doing it. Okay, I'll yeah. take it. Nice. <laughs> yeah. right. So, check this out. You might remember Pedro and I started down um, the Black Mesa, you know, the Half-Life mm -hmm. 1 remake, and they had, like, the guy was working on the mod. I'm like, oh, cool, we can do the multiplayer, like, Synergy. There was only like, three levels that were done, though. And we kind of yeah, ran, it yeah. kind of stopped at one point. And how long has it been since we've had news about that particular mod? I pretty sure it's done now. Oh, okay. We'll find <laughs> out next week when there's an update, right? <laughs> yeah, because I haven't seen any workshop updates from uh, Black Mesa in a long well, time. It, <laughs> what I'm saying is, we got to uh, investigate that. We'll take a look, but that's the reason um, we didn't stop. We didn't just say fuck it. I don't think we've ever done that with any mm -hmm. game. Yeah, no, it just wasn't done. Yeah, we kind of ran into a wall. But yeah, that's our story behind that. Not as cool as our story behind Serious Sam. This come fuck. Uh, oh. <laughs> OC Diego. OC Diego. Okay, the OC Diego. Uh, Serious 4 writes, Linux support is not planned at the moment for Sam 4. And the Stream Deck, uh-oh, Steam Deck. <laughs> Steam Deck. Yeah. Steam Deck. Could change that question mark. Developers will revisit Linux when Proton does not magically work or runs bad. No, they won't. No, I think developers we've will had just continue years. to ignore Linux. Yeah, if, if we've Proton had runs, years of... Uh, 
if it weren't for Proton, we wouldn't be playing as many games as we are today, let's be honest. Because, yeah, we've had since 2012 that the uh, now we're, Steam for Linux on, clients... Hang on, everything out. you're about to say isn't relevant now that the Steam Stream Deck is up. <laughs> you know, the Steam Deck that isn't out yet? Yeah. That thing that, theoretically, Valve time permitting, uh, will be out in December... Uh-huh. Yes. <laughs> so what we have to do, Pedro, is project using that data into the future instead of talking about shit in the past. I want you to give it That's a shot. I want you to give it a shot. I have faith in you that, that you're able to do a little bit of forecasting with data points. Come on. Well, uh, the, the forecasting is, oh, what's that? We don't have to spend any money doing it ourselves. Okay, Proton it is. Doesn't work with Proton? Tough. Now, I was talking to um, Jordan, I was talking to you earlier this week about this email. Mm Mm-hmm. And what do you think with Crow Team, though? Do you think, because Crow Team's always done, like, the crazy weird shit. They've always been like, Vulcan, what's that? That's brand new, that barely fucking functions? Shit, let's get it in our game. Let's make it a thing. Uh, For for sure. Um, Crow Team is definitely... um, in, in terms of like other, I'm not going to say AAA, but like A-level publishers uh, and developers, they're typically a little more willing to play ball with some of the weird, more esoteric stuff. That said, um, cons- considering we're not getting a native port of Sam 4, despite the fact that we got like very, very active development on Talos and Sam Fusion, I, here, here's, here's the thing. I, I want to believe. I want to believe that Crotoon will say, listen, we had to focus on getting Sam for out running. We're using Proton as a stopgap. Hey, here's your native port in five years. We're sorry, guys, but hey, we did it. But at the same time, I'm not going to hold my breath. Uh, no, I, I'm very optimistic. Talos, uh, I think Talos kind of ruined our expectations when it came to Crow Team because it was there from day one. Uh, actually, before day one, the demo was out for Linux too. So, yeah, I think all of our expectations were actually recalibrated when the Fusion came out and Sirius Sam 1 and Sirius Sam 2 and Sirius Sam 3 were all, like they had the Vulcan powered remakes. I'm like, oh, shit. All right. Um, you guys get some interest in this. Now, for me, this just gets interesting on how the Steam Deck plays out, because there is a situation. There is a real world thing where, you know, this is something that will happen. I'm not saying the developer will do it, but I, depending on what the market incentive is to get your performance from fuck, I get like 24 FERPs at 780. Uh, it's not really playable. And I'm like, all right, hang on. Let's see if we can do a build. Oh, shit. All right. So we can squeeze out a few extra and uh, make it play. So that's going to happen is what I'm saying. That's not theory, but may- whether or not they ship that is the wiggly squirrely part. So so my my my, my main my main the, the one the one argument I would have against that is we we've seen we've seen like what Feral does when they have when they're starting to do like native Vulcan ports even with stuff like um DXVK native the I, I, I don't know cuz we we've seen we've seen Proton outperform native solutions time and time again. So uh, I went I, back I, and I tested it. Now, the Pepsi challenge with the last thing that Feral did that he really called a AAA game was the Vulcan port of The Last Tomb Raider. That is still holding the performance ground over the um, latest uh, DXVK. Okay. But if you go so, back so maybe, even but... to Dirt Rally, then you see, oh, yeah, no, in Proton it runs at about twice the FURPS. And it looks better. Yeah. So... <laughs> So uh, again, it c- it could go either way. I'm I'm there there there. There's points in the pro column. There's points in the against column. I, I'm, Here's what I worry I'm about with the proton. Still to this day, it's a moving fucking target. Things get fixed that break other things. And as a yeah. developer, I'm thinking, how do I? Who's handling that tech support next week when my game no longer works and I can't do anything about it? <laughs> Because I'm 100 I mean, percent reliant on Proton. point to that moving target is uh, what's the difference between moving target and Proton moving targeted from Windows versions? Steam OS. <laughs> I'm, I'm I'm just I'm just gonna say that they're they're just as likely to say you know it's not worth the effort we're just gonna we're just gonna leave it and not do anything because it requires no development effort on our part to do nothing. We will have to see, but 
Until next week, yep. ladies and gentlemen, thanks for showing up. We got to cue the music. Bounce out of here. Roll some credits. Can I cue the music? There it is. That beautiful dulcet tone, that happiness, that joy. Thanks for showing up. Um, this has been another Linux Gamecast Weekly, and it's been episode 469. If you'd like to chat with me during the week, though, you can hold up. I'm pretty public. I'll get right back to you. Uh, if you're an IRC, just pop in there. We get an IRC channel. If you are a patron, you know, Discord or Twitch sub Discord. And I'm actually in there. I've had people like, whoa, what? Yeah, we, that's where we talk during the week. Uh, we're not absent from our own Discords. Or just on Twitter at Vinstone or Mastodon, mass.linuxgamecast.com. I'm at Vin. My name is Ron Svang. I'm quite upset that this is in episode 42069. But, you know, if you want to blaze it with me and or 69 me, you can follow me on Twitter at The Burning Fool or follow me on twitch.p slash Burning Fool. And I am Pedro Mateus, and after some quick maths, I discovered that last week was the ninth year anniversary of uh, Linux Gamecasts, so I need a party streamer right quick. <laughs> I don't nine, have one, nine, but yeah, nine. I was going <laughs> to... But yeah, the uh, yeah that that was nine nine fucking years, right? Uh, at unaccounted for on Twitter, if you must. I like how he pretends that we haven't been here long with him. It's <laughs> nine years of Pedro. <laughs> is, is is that like twelve years of slave? There's nine your hyphen, bitch. <laughs> yeah, there we are. Thank you. That's all I ever really wanted. Mm. It's all all I was craving this entire time. <laughs> We gotta, we gotta thank the people making this possible. Our lovely patrons, the executive producers. We got Omegas, and we got Aldius, and we are Arthur and End. I guess Aldius isn't in the list anymore. Um, we got the executive producers: Aldius, Barbara, and Scott Michaud. There's, there's Aldius, Aldius. Tom McCass, Mike G, <laughs> Empty Drummer, Holy Toast, and Kohaku. I forgot which one they were in. And our Chicago kicks ass tier: <laughs> Little Nikki Stan, Dark Wing, and handy, Abstraction. Uh, Lydia Format. <laughs> Shush you <laughs> and the sea monsters. Jack Renault Ryder, Drudgy Vertanuda, Justin Frostclaw with the Death Notes, Nova Basil Chad, Romeo Marson, System T, Craig Renee, Leonardo De Cresney, Kim Smashley G, Chris Stephen Jill, Benjamin Doom to Dot Wad, Stephen the the first one, uh, <laughs> Dirty Dean back and uh, Game of Tron. Thank you very oh, yeah, much, Jason Game of Tron. Joel <laughs> Gronkin Ladonka. Joel E. Let's see, Mr. Amish, uh, John Reginald. M. Daniel L. Scott <laughs> and Michael, Ryan J. Evandro P. E. <laughs> Minus nine. Zin. Oil of hope. And Zin. Such oily. Zin. Much hope. Okay. It's, every, it's like it's like um, Hanukkah. It's oily hope. Everyone, make your uh, show thumbnail face for um, Gary's mad. Five dudes.